Once upon a time, in a land of code, there existed a developer named Alex. Alex was a diligent and curious programmer, always seeking new ways to enhance their understanding of programming concepts. One day, Alex stumbled upon a magical chapter in a book titled Exploring Control Flow. Little did Alex know, this chapter held the key to unlocking the true power of functions. As Alex delved into the chapter, they discovered that control flow was all about determining the sequence of instructions within an application. Control flow could be likened to a map guiding the program through different routes, based on conditions and decisions. The chapter spoke of logical flows, conditional statements, and loops that dictated how instructions were executed. The chapter introduced a concept called functions. Alex was not new to functions, having used basic ones like main and print, but this chapter promised to take them to a whole new level of understanding. Functions, as Alex learned, were a way to group instructions together and isolate code for specific tasks. Question 1. What are functions, and how do they relate to control flow? Answer 1. Functions are blocks of code that group instructions together for a specific task. They play a significant role in control flow by allowing developers to isolate and organize code for better readability and reusability. The chapter started with the simplest kind of function, one without parameters or a return value. Alex followed along and created their first function named GetCurrentDateTime, which printed out the current date and time. Question 2. Describe the process of declaring a basic function without parameters or return value. Answer 2. To declare a basic function without parameters or a return value, you use the void keyword followed by the function's name and a pair of parentheses. Inside the function's body, you place the instructions you want the function to perform. As Alex's excitement grew, they realized that functions were more powerful when parameters were added. Parameters allowed information to be passed to functions, making them more versatile. The chapter illustrated how to use parameters to create a function that calculated time differences. Question 3. How do parameters enhance the functionality of functions? Answer 3. Parameters enable functions to accept external values that can be used in the function's computations or logic. This makes functions more flexible and adaptable to different scenarios. Further into the chapter, Alex discovered the concept of optional parameters. Named and positional optional parameters provided flexibility by allowing values to be omitted or provided in different ways. Question 4. What are named and positional optional parameters, and how do they differ? Answer 4. Named optional parameters are specified using curly braces and can be passed in any order by providing their names along with values. Positional optional parameters are specified using square brackets and are passed based on their position in the parameter list. Named parameters provide more clarity, while positional parameters offer brevity. As Alex turned the pages, they encountered a new level of function power, returning values. Functions could not only perform tasks, but also produce computed results that could be used elsewhere in the program. Question 5. How does a function with a return value differ from a function without a return value? Answer 5. A function with a return value uses the equal sign and arrow to indicate the value it computes and returns to the caller. This allows functions to produce results that can be used in other parts of the program. With newfound confidence, Alex delved into the realm of anonymous functions. These were nameless functions that could encapsulate a single expression. Alex found them elegant and realized they were often used for concise calculations. Question 6. What are anonymous functions, and in what situations are they commonly used? Answer 6. Anonymous functions, also known as lambda functions or closures, are functions without a name. They are used for short expressions that compute a value. They are often used in scenarios where a function needs to be passed as an argument or used within another function. Alex's adventure through control flow didn't end there. They learned about using a future to introduce delays in code execution, which was particularly useful for asynchronous operations. Question 7. What is a future, and how can it be used to introduce delays in code execution? Answer 7. A future is an asynchronous operation that represents a potential value or error that will be available at some point in the future. It can be used to introduce delays by using the await keyword to pause code execution until the future completes. As Alex reached the end of the chapter, they realized the true power of functions in controlling the flow of their programs.
Once upon a code base, nestled within the realm of programming, a chapter named Handling Lists and Maps emerged. This chapter, a treasure trove of knowledge, unveiled the art of managing data with Dart. It was a journey through the world of lists and maps, fundamental data structures that lent their magic to information handling in Dart. Intrigued by the promise of mastering these tools, developers embarked on the adventure of this chapter. Whether seasoned travelers through other programming languages or newcomers to the landscape, all found value in the self-contained code examples that illuminated the path. Question 1. What are lists and maps, and how do they relate to data handling in Dart? Answer 1. Lists and maps are fundamental data structures used to organize and manage collections of data in Dart. Lists provide an ordered collection of objects, while maps offer key value pairings for efficient data retrieval. The chapter began with an exploration of lists, versatile indexable data structures that could hold a variety of objects. They were the building blocks of many applications, and developers rejoiced in their simplicity and power. Question 2. How are lists used in Dart, and why are they essential? Answer 2. Lists are used to organize objects in an ordered collection. They offer methods to manipulate and retrieve data efficiently. Lists are crucial for managing and processing data in various scenarios, but the journey didn't stop there. Developers were introduced to the enchanting world of maps, where key value pairings held the key to associative relationships. This concept was likened to a library where books, values, were organized by their unique catalog numbers, keys. Question 3. How do maps work, and why are they valuable for data handling? Answer 3. Maps consist of key value pairs, where keys are unique identifiers used to access values. They allow developers to efficiently associate and retrieve data based on keys, making them valuable for organizing and accessing information. As developers delve deeper, they learn the art of creating lists of data. It was as if they were crafting their own enchanted scrolls that could hold a sequence of values, ready to be wielded in their programs. Question 4. How can lists be created and used effectively to hold collections of data? Answer 4. Lists can be created using square brackets and hold a variety of data types. They are essential for organizing and manipulating collections of objects. Lists offer methods to add, remove, and iterate over data. The adventure continued with a revelation about the power of amending lists. Developers discovered that they could expand their collections by adding new elements, like uncovering hidden treasures on their journey. Question 5. How can new elements be added to an existing list, and why is this feature valuable? Answer 5. New elements can be added to an existing list using the add method. This feature is valuable because it allows lists to dynamically grow as new data becomes available. Amidst their explorations, developers encounter complex types, a fusion of maps and lists that enabled them to create intricate data structures. These structures allowed them to weave together multiple pieces of information in a coherent manner. Question 6. What are complex data types, and how can they be created using lists and maps? Answer 6. Complex data types are structures that combine lists and maps to organize and manage multiple data elements. They provide a powerful way to represent and manipulate diverse sets of information. The journey through maps continued, unveiling the magic of handling key value pairings. Developers realized that maps were like magical spell books, where the keys were the incantations that unlocked the desired values. Question 7. How can map key value pairings be used to organize and access data effectively? Answer 7. Maps use keys to associate values, creating a powerful way to organize and access data efficiently. They are commonly used for managing settings, configurations, and associative data relationships. The developer's quest also led them to the art of printing map data structure content. They discovered various incantations to summon and display the information hidden within these magical structures. Question 8. How can map data be printed and displayed in a readable format? Answer 8. Map data can be printed using the print statement with appropriate formatting. The dollar symbol can be used for string interpolation to display variable values within strings. As their journey reached its zenith, Developers learned the art of validating key existence within a map. It was as if they had gained the ability to sense the presence of hidden keys within these mystical structures, getting started with object-oriented Dart. Once upon a time, in the world of programming, 
there existed a powerful paradigm known as object-oriented programming, OOPP. It was a technique that allowed developers to craft code in a way that mimicked the real world, where objects could hold both data and the methods to manipulate that data. DART, a versatile language, embraced this paradigm. And in this section, we shall embark on a journey to explore the art of object-oriented programming with DART. Our tale begins with an introduction to the concepts of OOP and how they harmonize with DART. As we traverse through this chapter, you will not only learn to wield the power of classes, but also delve into the enchanting realm of object inheritance and extension. This knowledge is crucial because DART is inherently an object-oriented language, and mastering these techniques will empower you to wield the language with mastery. Amidst our adventure, we shall encounter essential concepts such as the fundamental elements of object-oriented programming, the art of class initialization through constructors, the magical world of inheritance, made possible by the extends keyword, the mystic incantations of defining a class's signature using an interface, the secret of imbuing a class with additional powers using mixins. As you embrace the journey ahead, remember that proficiency in object-oriented dart is a path that winds uphill, demanding diligence and patience. By taking each step deliberately, you shall ascend the heights of knowledge, where the intricate web of classes and objects shall become an integral part of your programming arsenal. 5.1. Beginning Object-Oriented Dart In a realm where reusable components were cherished, the concept of object-oriented programming flourished. The foundation of this concept was the class, a blueprint that gave birth to objects capable of holding data and executing methods. As we peer into this landscape, we find ourselves at the crossroads of declaration and extension of objects, guided by the heart of Dart. Picture the unfolding journey as a captivating tapestry, woven with threads of inheritance and expansion. Dart, with its commitment to the principles of OOP, eagerly awaits your grasp. The journey begins with understanding the heart of the matter, embracing the key terminologies of OOP in Dart. We'll then traverse through the art of crafting classes, the very essence of OOP. As the day turns to night and the stars paint the sky, remember that while the path may be challenging, the rewards are boundless. With each piece of knowledge you gather, the puzzle of object-oriented dart will piece together, illuminating your way to programming mastery. 5.2. Creating a Class Imagine a workshop where artisans sculpted objects, breathing life into their creations through a fusion of data and function. In the realm of dart, classes are these very workshops, where you can craft objects that encapsulate both information and the tools to manipulate it. Envision crafting a class as molding clay, a process that brings life to an otherwise static idea. With every class you forge, you shape the essence of data, imbuing it with functions that can be called upon to perform tasks. Dart, with its elegant syntax, grants you the power to construct these workshops with finesse. As you craft each class, remember that the choice of properties and methods determines its uniqueness. Much like an artist adding strokes to a canvas, you shape your class to best serve its purpose. The key lies in understanding how data and methods intertwine, creating an intricate dance that defines the very essence of object-oriented Dart. 5.3. Initializing a class. Using a constructor. In a land where objects were birthed from blueprints known as classes, there existed a magical initiation ceremony known as the constructor. This ritual, performed upon the creation of each object, bestowed upon it the gift of initialization. The constructor, much like a master craftsman, took it upon itself to set the stage for an object's existence. It was responsible for bestowing properties with initial values, ensuring that the object emerged into the world fully equipped for its purpose. Through the art of the constructor, properties sprang to life, carrying with them the essence of the object's identity. As you embark on your journey through the realm of object-oriented dart, Remember that each object's birth was guided by the constructor's wisdom. Just as a skilled artisan imparts life to their creations, you too shall infuse your objects with purpose through the magic of the constructor. 5.4 Adding Class Inheritance In a land where classes served as the building blocks of code, a concept called inheritance flourished. It was a way to harness the power of existing classes, allowing new classes to inherit their attributes and methods. In a land where code danced to the rhythm of logic and precision, a realm known as testing emerged, a crucial stage in the development saga. Testing bridged the gap between the grand tapestry of application requirements and the intricate threads of developed code. In the heart of every developer's journey, testing was a sacred ritual, bestowing confidence and unveiling defects hidden in the shadows. As our story unfolds, we find ourselves immersed in Dart, 
a language that shared its test framework with the enchanting world of Flutter. This chapter invites us to embark on a journey through the realm of testing in Dart as we explore its three distinct forms, unit, integration, and widget UI. These forms create the foundation for a pyramid of testing, each layer contributing to the strength and resilience of your application. 6.1, the foundation of unit and integration. Our quest commences with the two foundational layers of the test pyramid, unit testing and integration testing. Unit testing, akin to a magnifying glass, focuses on scrutinizing individual components in isolation. These tests peer into the intricate workings of functions and classes, verifying whether they produce the expected outputs for given inputs. Integration testing, a step further, examines the harmonious symphony that arises when multiple components dance together. It ensures that the interconnected pieces of your application collaborate seamlessly, laying the groundwork for a functional and stable whole. 6.2. Crafting the Test Stage To venture into the realm of testing, we must first summon the tools and rituals of the trade. By adding the test package to your application's PubSpec YAML, you invoke the power of the Dart test framework. This package is your ally in the quest for a robust code base, seamlessly integrating testing into your development workflow. The incantation to conjure the test package is simple. SQL, copy code, Dart pub, add test, dev 6.3, the art of unit testing. In the realm of Dart, unit testing reigns as the most common form of testing, a testament to its power and simplicity. As we weave our tests, we follow the ancient A.E.A pattern. Arrange, act, and assert. This pattern guides our steps, ensuring the clarity and readability of our tests. Imagine a test, an explorer on a journey of discovery. The arrange phase sets the stage, preparing the input values and expectations. The act phase unleashes the explorer, invoking the code to be tested. Finally, the assert phase stands as the gatekeeper, comparing the actual outcomes with the expected ones. Through this pattern, we sculpt tests that are both robust and self-documenting, enhancing our understanding of the code and its behavior. 6.4 Uniting Multiple Tests Just as a story is woven from a tapestry of words, our tests can be woven into intricate narratives of their own. The canvas of Dart allows us to group multiple unit tests within a single file, promoting organization and simplicity. Picture a repository of tests, each following the A-Delay pattern, coming together to form a coherent story of code validation. The journey of a thousand tests begins with a single step, and as we unite these steps, our understanding deepens, and our code base strengthens. 6.5. Harnessing the power of mocks. In the intricate web of code, sometimes the threads of data are beyond our grasp, hidden behind APIs, databases, or external services. In such times, the power of mock data emerges as a beacon of light. A mock interface becomes our guide, replicating the behavior of external dependencies. With the aid of asynchronous tasks and the await keyword, we fashion a realm where data flows at our command, illuminating the path to thorough testing. Mocks ensure that our code stands resilient even when the forces of external factors are beyond our control. And thus, with each test written, with each assertion validated, we journey deeper into the heart of Dart's testing realm. Armed with the AAA pattern, fortified by the unity of multiple tests, and empowered by the magic of mocks, we become the guardians of code integrity. As we traverse the land of testing, remember that each test is a step towards robustness, a stride towards quality, and a testament to your mastery of the Dart language. Taming the Widget UI As our saga unfolds, we reach the pinnacle of the test pyramid, the realm of widget UI testing. In this ethereal domain, we wield our tests to interact with widgets, breathing life into user interfaces and validating their responsiveness. Flutter's wings flutter in harmony with Dart, sharing the same testing framework. The widget UI tests encapsulate the user experience, from taps to swipes, from animations to interactions. These tests ensure that the visual symphony unfolds flawlessly, captivating users with a seamless interface. The Art of Widget Composition As we delve deeper into the enchanting realm of Flutter, we uncover the artistry of widget composition. In this world, widgets are the building blocks of beauty, harmoniously combining to craft mesmerizing user interfaces. A symphony of text widgets, image widgets, and containers, among others, come together to tell the story of your application. The dance of alignment, padding, and spacing orchestrates the perfect rhythm of elements on the screen. With Flutter's widget composition, you become the conductor, orchestrating a visual masterpiece. 7.8. From Concept to Canvas. Creating Widgets. In our journey through Flutter's landscape, we turn our attention to creating widgets. With a flick of your code wand, 
you bring widgets to life, each one with a unique role to play in the grand narrative of your application. Widgets, like characters in a story, have properties and behaviors that define their role. Stateless and stateful widgets emerge as protagonists, shaping the user interface's destiny. You can picture stateless widgets as characters with fixed traits, always true to their essence. Meanwhile, stateful widgets evolve, changing their appearance and behavior over time. The widget tree grows, branches intertwining, as you weave together this code tapestry. From the root widget to the leaves, every piece contributes to the immersive experience that your users will cherish. 7.9 Crafting Fluid User Experiences With the flutter of widgets, we unearth the secret to crafting fluid user experiences. Flutter's reactive architecture, inspired by the React framework, empowers you to embrace the ebb and flow of user interactions. State, the heartbeat of your application, dances across the widget tree. Whether it's the blink of a button or the scroll of a list, each interaction triggers a mesmerizing cascade of updates. The stateful widgets, like actors on a stage, adapt and transform as the user journey unfolds. And as the curtain rises on animations, Flutter's animation framework adds yet another layer of enchantment. With animated widgets and transitions, you breathe life into your app, creating a symphony of motion that delights and captivates. 7.10 Beyond the Screen Navigation and Beyond Our Adventure takes a new turn as we venture beyond the screen. Navigation, the compass of user experiences, guides our users through the digital landscape you've crafted. Flutter's navigation system is like a map, charting the course through your app's different screens. As the user navigates through the app, the flutter of transitions and routes keeps the journey smooth and engaging. But the journey doesn't end with navigation alone. We traverse deeper into the realms of networking, data persistence, and APIs. With every interaction, every data exchange, and every connection, we knit the threads of functionality that weave the tapestry of a complete Flutter application. 7.11, a new horizon beckons. Our tale of Flutter's introduction has only just begun. As we turn the pages of our journey, we'll explore the secrets of Flutter's responsive design, delve into the realm of animations and gestures, and unravel the mysteries of managing application state. With every step we take, we'll uncover the nuances of Flutter's capabilities and learn how to harness its power to create stunning, interactive, and feature-rich applications. The world of Flutter is vast, and as we venture deeper, we'll become skilled navigators of this rich landscape, shaping ideas into pixel-perfect reality, embracing responsive design. The chapters of our journey unfold, revealing the captivating art of responsive design in Flutter. In this chapter, we explore the magic that transforms your application into a chameleon, adapting seamlessly to devices of all sizes and orientations. Flutter's responsive design capabilities emerge from its intrinsic nature of widgets. As you craft your UI, you learn to embrace flexible layouts, utilize media query to understand the screen's dimensions, and wield the power of orientation changes to reorganize your interface. With every twist and turn of the device, your app elegantly shifts to provide the optimal user experience. 7.13 Animation and Gesture, A Dance of Delight In this chapter, we unravel the enchanting world of animations and gestures, where your app comes alive with delightful motion and intuitive interactions. Flutter's animation framework becomes your brush, painting vivid animations that capture users' attention. With tween animations, physics-based simulations, and custom transitions, you breathe life into your app, creating an immersive experience that captivates users.